All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another podcast episode, and this week we're going to be talking about some upcoming paddles, some paddles that released, more info about the Gearbox, a tournament that I played in this weekend, which will be our main talking point, which will be kind of fun, and then you have to stay tuned to the kitchen this week because we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you what the chefs cooking this time. You're just gonna have to wait till we get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've yeah. got a bunch of paddles to go over really quick. Some of these we're gonna go over quicker than others because we don't mm-hmm. necessarily have information, but I wanted to let you guys know what was coming out. So there's the Adidas Metal Bone, which is going to be an interesting and different paddle. You're gonna have to wait to hear more about it. I have not hit it yet. But the concept of it is interesting, and I'll be very curious to see how it plays. Didn't, uh, Anna Lee, go ahead. No, yeah, didn't uh, I saw a photo of it? And isn't the metal pieces? They're like little bolts that you screw in near the throat, right? Is that the one? That's, I, yeah, I saw some pictures of it. It's hard to say exactly what like from that, but it looks like it's going to be something kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And I think it. In the picture, it also looks edgeless, has a small hole in it, which, you know, isn't exactly a novel idea at this point. Right. Um, right. But yeah, it'd be kind of interesting to see if Adidas can make a rebound with this. Who knows? Maybe it'll maybe it'll be like the Gearbox. It'll just take them from zero to hero overnight. No one will even care about the Gearbox well, anymore. We're, we're going to talk about Gearbox later, but I don't know if they're quite hero just yet because, you know, <laughs> they got problems. They got, they're like, they went from like zero to hero to like mid to like, and then back to hero when we get to our main talking point, but we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Continue. Um, Continue. After that, we got the Annalee Waters signature paddle, the raw carbon fiber one. That one uh, shouldn't be too much longer till that's out. Uh, Do you think she's going to become more dominant with the new one? I mean, her shots already look like they have so much more top spin. Dang. She's going to be unbeatable now. Yeah, I'll be curious to see. I'm curious what that paddle will play like because uh, paddle tech cores have always felt really nice to me. I mean, I liked this last generation of them, and if they get even better spin and they're more powerful because the the Tempest line is supposed to be their control model, so I can't even imagine how hard these bantams might hit. I don't know. I'm actually kind of looking forward to that one. That one might mm-hmm. be fun. I'm right. hoping I don't have my hopes too high. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Um, then we got the Hyperion C2, which I feel like, I mean, you can tell me what you think, but I feel like this just blindsided all of us. I mean, there was no, no one, as far as I'm aware, no reviewer was told anything about it. No reviewer has one. It just dropped and was a thing. Dang. Wait, it dropped already? Like it's for sale already? Mm, Actually, you know what? I guess I haven't confirmed it was for sale but just all the information came out about it but yeah i guess i didn't go to the website and actually see if it's for sale but i with how it dropped i guess i kind of assumed it was but maybe not wait wait. let me check let me check all right i didn't hear i didn't hear anything about it i mean i knew something you didn't see like all the stuff about it no oh interesting yeah there's there's a handful of videos with like simone talking about it i see it i see no you know what you're right I did see something about it, but when I saw it, it was just very underwhelming. And and honestly, I thought (laughs) that I didn't even know it was a different battle. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, isn't that just another? I can't blame you. It looks, I mean, I'm not going to say it looks just like it. It's obviously rounded head, but. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it right now and it is, it's It's, a Hyperion with a new paint job and a new colored edge card. As far as I can tell, it's a Perseus shaped like a Hyperion. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. it. That's from what I can tell. Of course, they were going to hype it up because it's probably because that's probably what it is. I just wonder. Like, I'm surprised no one was told anything. No one got sent anything. Like, maybe Yolo was like, ah, it's just like a mid tier launch. Like, I feel like the way they did it, clearly they don't care that much about it or think right, it's exactly. that big of a deal. Like, that's telling. Yeah, I feel like it kind of is, but I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it's better. Maybe it's interesting. I don't know. I don't have one, but. We'll see. You don't but, yeah. have one? Wow. That's one of first. the only paddles I don't have. One of the only paddles. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Moving on. Well, let's see. What else yes. we got next after that? Six Zero has come out with some new new ones. The yep, Six Zero, Infinity the Infinity, and the, and the Ruby. Yep. I'm, I'm very stoked. Are we allowed to talk about that or not? Not yet. We're not. <laughs> but <laughs> they're, they're coming soon. Not <laughs> They will be this year, 
both of those models. Uh, so if you're, you know, waiting for a battle, those are coming out. Then uh, Bread and Butter Loco should also be soon. I think early November yeah. is the pre-orders, right? Yes, yes. It's our pre-orders. I mean, you can see some teasers for it already. So that'll be coming soon. Um, I haven't hit one just yet, but it's really just the filth Same. in a new shape. Uh, and uh, next up, we also have the R3 Nova that also got released as well or coming out soon. Soon. It should be out. I think it's a day after this podcast drops. October 31st, I think. Oh, snap. Right on Halloween. Let's go. Okay. Yep. So I don't know. I've heard decent things about it. I hit it a little bit. Uh, it, certainly nothing bad about the paddle, but I wasn't like, wow, it's got a standout feature. I, and that doesn't mean it's anything bad. It's just kind of like it's a good paddle. You know what I mean? Like if you liked the R1, wanted something stiffer, you know, there's the R3. You know, it'll hit a little bit harder. Um, it's elongated, you know. Nothing wrong with it, but I, I have not spent extensive time with it yet, and I don't know when or if I will. Uh, so we'll see. I will say, do you have one yet? Yeah, I got one. That edge guard, sick. That yes. baby blue, yeah, that's nice. Yes, I like some, blue. Some to stand out. I know. <laughs> you know you like blue, Chris. I, I do. Know. I do love me some blue, even <laughs> okay. though my background's red. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the Diadem 18K Power. That should be coming out. Is it the day of the, I, my watch isn't even on? It's either the day of this podcast or also the day after this podcast from what I thought I heard. So Is that I'll, I've hit, yes, it's thermoformed, longer handle, like okay. 5.75 inches, I believe. I've hit it a little bit. I, I was planning on doing a video. I don't know if I will now because like <sighs> paddles are in such an interesting spot right now. And I'm curious how you feel about this mm -hmm. where. It is not a bad paddle at all. I thought it was fine. I could play with it and probably it, I'll feel good about it. But like, I'm sure it's going to be 230 bucks. It's not anything special. Like, it's so late to the game, right? Like, all of this kind of started basically a year ago. Like, January is kind of when the storm hit. Now they decide to release what might as well be similar to a Carbon 1X, but just doesn't hit nearly as hard. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. It just feels too late to me. And at the price point that I believe they will be charging, I'm just like, buy an R3 Nova, buy a Filth, buy a Sig Zero. But I don't know. It's just it's but late. Chris, the 18K, though, that pattern. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like, okay, okay. I don't it's, know. I've, I've seen it get good spin in people's tests, but like okay. nothing that blows other things just way out of the water. So all yeah. that to say, if you like Diadem, and you wanted a longer edge with more power, you will like this paddle. And yes. if the money does not matter to you, you're probably gonna like the paddle. Yeah. But if yeah. you've hit a lot of the other options, I just don't think you'll care. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think right now we are at the stage, like at least in this part of the year where we were kind of last year, like last year around this time, everybody was coming out with raw carbon fiber paddles and we're like, okay, yeah. it's all the same, like nothing crazy. There's some minor tweaks here with the weight, swing weight, maybe the shape, um, yeah. minor tweaks. And now we're kind of in that same cycle, nearing that end of cycle again. And there are a few stand standalones because like last year we were saying that and that's when Thermoform like was probably already out and released, but we it just didn't pick up steam. It didn't pick up wind until, yeah. you know, the beginning of the following year. And we are in that same cycle right now again with you know, the new gearbox and the new Lux Control and some other new paddles out as well. Yep. So no, nothing is impressing Chris right now is is what we're trying <laughs> hey, to say. Well, 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 that's not true. But you got to do a little bit more than just whatever the rest of the market's doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The market's catching up. Feel me? Yeah. The market's caught up. Um, but last one as far as upcoming releases. Well, two more actually. Sorry. Uh, the first... A new company that launched, Pickle. I actually know these guys because they're from Minnesota. Uh, they uh, signed represent. Tyra. So Tyra is now officially signed, and they have. They didn't launch her signature paddle yet. It's on the USAP approved list, and I haven't. I haven't hit their paddles yet. My brother has, and he likes it so far. So at some point, I'm sure I'll get to it. Um, but I guess keep an eye on that. If you see Tyra with the new paddle soon, that is who the company is. So. That's cool. Keep an eye. 
Isn't yeah. isn't our good buddy Mr. David Utrell a part of that team as well? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh dang, dude, you all right? Put Minnesota on the map. I see, Chris. When are you gonna put Minnesota on the map? For what? I talk about Minnesota all the time. I talk about how great the pickleball here is, like every week. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I talk about a new your, facility. You're play. You're playing. You're playing. Like your results, man. When you're gonna go pro and whatnot. That's what I'm talking about. We're getting there. That's the next thing coming up. It's coming up, John. You know, just, we'll like to throw out those teasers early in the pod. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last upcoming paddle. Uh, I got this in the mail a couple days ago, and I saw them posting about it on Facebook. Uh, ProLite, who you guys probably haven't heard that name in a long time, heard them do basically anything because they've been asleep. Like, their latest paddle was a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber, which was like, hey, We're that here. was cool a year and a half ago. Almost two years ago, that was cool, in fact. Mm. So they were late. Now, did you... Did Frank, you see Frank, any pictures? Franklin's coming out with that too, right? Did, uh, Franklin didn't they come out with a raw Don't carbon fiber? Don't even get fiber? me started on Franklin. <laughs> I, my faith. I look. Here's the thing. I'll give everyone. Everyone gets a second chance. I'll hit the paddle and I will go in like assuming like, hey, maybe they did better. I'm telling you, my hunch right now is either it's just a Gen One raw carbon fiber. That's what I mostly my highest probability is. My second guess is that it's just a thermoformed paddle. But knowing Franklin, they're going to be a year behind that. Next year, you'll get the thermoform version. Okay. All right. (laughs) I have so little hope for that thing. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong, Will. No. It won't be the last. No, definitely not. Okay, continue, continue. (laughs) Yes. So, Prolite K2. Here's what's interesting about this. I. It is both interesting and very uninteresting at the same time. So, I showed this thing to you. It is an edgeless paddle. That looks kind of like the, um, what am I, what's the paddle I'm blanking on? The Kitchen. The Kitchen Pro oh. that probably none of you even know what I'm talking about because Will and I did Pro. a review forever ago. Go guys, go check out that video where <laughs> where Chris and I did a review on it. it it's one of our first, is, is it our first paddle review together? Yeah, for sure. Oh, dude. I love that paddle. <laughs> I actually really liked it. You should, can you, when I come visit, can you bust it out? Like I, I actually, I might have it. donated both of them. No, <laughs> I know there was a college that needed paddles, so I donated a bunch of. Okay, paddles to them. I mean, I guess it makes sense to donate, but also those that paddle that's that is a key moment in our history in our friendship. True, like, I didn't think about that. Like that, that was a momentum. <laughs> 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 like whoever guys if, if you're in that college i don't know which college you donated but if you're listening to this and you have that please bring it back to us or at least like come find us and have a sign it or something it may it might be worth something in the future who knows it you can you you something. can you can compare it to to that versus ben john signed whatever hundredth oh edition thousand dollar paddle and we'll see so you you never know you never know how many of you out there would would want that paddle like it's the first paddle that chris and i reviewed together and there's a video of it and if we signed it would you guys want it i just want to know they would want you to pay them to take it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that thing is but so anyways. rare that thing is so rare you can't even the kitchen pro that that company no longer exists they don't sell that anymore it's well that might add some value okay anyways yeah anyways, anyways. Moving- it reminds me a little bit of that. It's not the same thing. Like uh, the Kitchen Pro actually was a slightly more novel concept, in my opinion, because of like it was kind of like a whole one piece true frame is what it felt like to me. Maybe maybe they are kind of the same concept, but when you look at them, it feels different. Anyways, it's an edgeless paddle. It has a hole near the throat. Um, it, it has pink red on the face. I put it under a microscope looks about the same as like a zero zero three or you know selkirk lux style grit um that's why i think it's uninteresting it's like we've seen the hole we've seen paint grit we've seen edgeless like it's not doing anything new but pro light's really excited about it so and i haven't hit it yet so again it the performance of it might be amazing Mm. but i've not gotten to see that yet so i'm just judging this off looks what i will say they did interesting is you know how paddles, like when you go all the way around, like it's the same thickness, right? Like it's 19 millimeter or 13 Mm -hmm. millimeter whole way around. On the K2, it's actually a lot thicker near the handle slash throat, and then it tapers 
into what I assume is around a 13 to 12 millimeter ish design. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's interesting. That's kind of fascinating. We'll see if that affects playability at all. So that's something new. We haven't seen it yeah. before. Yeah, I've not seen that. So maybe, who knows? Maybe this will put them slightly back on the map. I'm not convinced yet, but I'm open to being wrong. I'm open to being wrong. Could okay. Could be way off there. All right. All one right. more. Wait, one more paddle. The, well, yep. well, kind of before we, we move on, um, Cliff's Paddle, I think, also just got released the Varus, right? Oh, yep. True. Yep. And uh, I had that one. I, I don't think you've played with it, but I played with it, and I, I think it's pretty good. It's a very good, like, thermoformed control uh, paddle. So, uh, and it's like long handle, pretty low swing weight. So, something to check out if that's something that you're in the market for, just a more control centric paddle that's elongated and with a lower swing weight. Yeah, I have nothing to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't. I haven't done anything. I'm literally staring at the unopened box right next to me. The un oh, so oh, so you do have one in I, in your I studio. Have, yeah, I have it. It's just sitting there, and I haven't hit it yet. Oh, okay, okay. I've Sweet. had to get. I've had to get so, and I, you've for sure experienced this. But I've just yes. had to get so selective about what to review because one. Not everyone cares. Two, a lot of things on the market are similar. And three, like I want to spend time on the things that people actually want to see. And obviously no one knew anything about this yet. Maybe after, you know, now that it's launched and he's made some videos or whatever, maybe people will be interested. But yeah, um, yeah it's just it's tough to get to them all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <sighs> all right. Well, moving on. We've got two paddles. These are out. Uh, we're going to talk about the Lux and the Gearbox. I know. More Gearbox news, but I promise <laughs> we've got news. I, most people have probably seen my Lux review by now. Do you have any thoughts you want? I know you really like it, so you have anything you want to contribute yeah. about it? Yeah, I do like it. Uh, by the time this you're hearing this, maybe my video and review is out on it. Uh, I'm still working on it. It's just been super busy because I was busy making uh, videos for it for Selkirk. So quick disclaimer, <laughs> it, like it, when I'm talking about the Lux controller, but Quick disclaimer is that I am an employee of Selkirk, so take what what I say about the control air with a grain of salt. And the first thing I'm going to say is that it's good, it, but it's also all right. He's biased. Shut him down. <laughs> Shut him. Get him off the pod. It's... I can't even. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's not anything that you haven't seen before because that, technically this paddle has been out for a year already. Like yeah. with the 003, there's not much that has changed, and it's but it's still very good. Right. Yeah. Like the O3, I thought was a great paddle, um, and they made some small and minor improvements. And uh, I don't like. That's the thing. There's there's not too much to say about it. To be quite honest, I will say though that it looks sick. Like it does. It does look really good. I will say I'm shocked mm -hmm. they went for that gold color. I Why? just I, because people in my area are already complaining about seeing the ball off it, and there's already been complaints throughout the year and you know i'm already on the fence of like whatever like i'm sure it does impact things for some people but like i just don't personally care and it's never impacted me but i'm just surprised with those talks going on this year that they released it anyways i mean you know what i mean they, they they already had it already manufactured they already had some you know shipments Fair, in. that could be could be and they're like okay let's just sell it and then we'll see if if it does well if people don't like it then they won't make more of it and i you know, of course it doesn't bother you because you're colorblind. So <laughs> it makes perfect sense that it doesn't bother you, Chris. <laughs> but too, but if you have a ball that's the same color as the face, I don't see those as like a red ball and a blue face. <laughs> okay, this is, <laughs> this is true. So, okay, so like the gold color, and I mean with, it's, it's kind of more of a very, I don't know. I don't know if I call it gold, but it's like a very pale It's like beige. a muted mustard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But can people not really not see the gold. contrast between... Yeah, can people not see the contrast between that and the ball? I mean, most people are playing with bright neon balls. Well, I mean, I guess the Dura is kind of closer to it in, in color. Here's the thing. You're asking the wrong guy because I already don't think it's a big deal. I'm just saying I know people are going to complain, so I was just surprised they did it. Oh, 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 so people aren't complaining about it. Are people complaining about it right now already? Or no? I have seen complaints about it already. I don't personally care. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm in people... the camp of get over it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say that. Yeah, you guys out there, 
Get over it. Shoot. Yeah. And like, unless you're playing pro, like, eh, eh, you're fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Blame it on, you know, stop. If it's not the ball, if it's not the paddle, it's always something else, right? It's always something else. Exactly. Yeah, which yeah. Oh, we'll get a little bit to that soon. But okay. I, the last thing I'll say, which I said in my review is like the Lux is a totally fine paddle. Like, I think it's good. I think it's better for mass market than the 003, but it's not. It's a control paddle. It's got amazing control. I could like drop with that ball, like do drop shots at the kitchen line, like way better than I can with a lot of other paddles. But like if you've used a 003 with lead, like I did for a long time, Mm -hmm. you're just going to go. I mean, it's kind of like what I was already using, like as a good paddle, you know, like so if you've used lead, like Lux isn't going to blow you away. But I think it's better for the masses now and it's cheaper. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, I think it's, if you have the money, it's, to me, it's a pretty easy recommendation for, you know, almost anybody at any level, in my opinion, like that control, it has just enough power. And I feel like if you're learning the game, you're learning the soft game, like, like, that's a good one, like to have that can kind of grow with you. You started off with that paddle. Most, most of the times I'll recommend like some sort of gen one raw carbon fiber paddle like for you to work on the soft game but you can easily pick that one up too and kind of you know improve with it and then that paddle will grow with you as you improve yeah i do wish i had put in my review one like i just after i posted something that was kind of popping up in my head especially with the gearbox uh Mm -hmm. buzz right now is like okay yes i think the gearbox is objectively a high tier paddle it has lots of traits that make it that paddle but there are Mm -hmm. downsides to that paddle which have like already been talked about plenty like sweet spots a little smaller especially if you don't add lead it's obviously very powerful so like if your resets aren't good or your hands aren't soft it's going to be hard to use like i think something that happens in the paddle market a lot is generally speaking these softer paddles will just be better for people like zero zero three if i had to say if I had to pick for the mass market of people, like three five to four five, they can only pick one of these two gearbox or like a lux. I'm giving them a lux. Mm-hmm. I, for most of those players, the lux will be a better paddle than the gearbox would. And I think people just forget that like control paddles are better for most people. It yeah. just it's just the simple fact. For most people, that's the better play. Not everyone, but most people. Yeah, I would agree. Would agree. All right, yeah. so let's see. Moving, I mean, we're talking about the gearbox, and apparently, it's still having issues. You wrote here, you know, there's been some instances of cracked edges, and uh, it's looks like it's mostly control paddles that, or the control models that have. Uh, That's been what I these keep issues. hearing. Really? Yeah, I didn't notice this, but people in my Discord, someone noticed that it was like only cracked paddles were the control models that doesn't mean there hasn't been a power one but the majority of them have been and then i have a guy in minnesota who was actually at my tournament this weekend mm-hmm. and he was like yeah i've already had to warranty two of my control models because the edge is cracked and gearbox took care of him like super fast i think he's already got his replacements like he's fine but he also observed that so then it just made me wonder i was like as far as I can tell, it's the same paint wrapping the thing. Like, the I don't decal. know why it would be mm-hmm. different. Yeah. yeah. What, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Raphael called it paints. Like, whatever it is, I would think it's the same. Don't know why it would be different, but people said might be a control model thing. Can't confirm. Don't know. But that's just some early anecdotes I was hearing. Uh, people were also saying, like, they dropped their paddle from, like, four feet and their edge guard just, like, cracked like crazy. Now, I'm not saying that didn't happen. I'm sure it did. But at this tournament this weekend, I dropped my paddle at least three times from shoulder height, and it just went straight to the ground, Mm -hmm. my gearbox. Yeah. And it's completely fine. Like, no issue. So I'm always a little skeptical when people are like, bro, my paddle's like destroyed after I dropped it one inch off the ground. Like, did you see that video Doug from Bread and Butter posted where they were like, had the whatever it was they were like putting a spark on the paddle yes yes. get on the ground (laughs) yes that's what i imagine some of these people are doing with their paddle and they're like bro all i did was drop it on carpet (laughs) (laughs) all i did was smack it into this concrete with a sparkler attached to it why it shouldn't be cracking what's going on 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. My mic keeps falling here, so I'm trying to fix it. Um, but yeah, it just, I'm sure, I, I believe people, I'm sure it has happened to them, but I just, okay. with how high mine has fallen from, I was like, I don't know, it's fine. Okay, but, well, you didn't, you didn't have the edge guard messing up on you. What about the handle? Because there's been some instances where the handles have also been cracking. Like everything, everybody's complaining about everything about that paddle. So the handle, yep. there's been dents in, in yep. the face. It's yep. not, I mean, when they say dense, are like, are these like huge? No, dents? it's like a like really, s- it's like a small dimple yeah. in the face. Okay. My it opinion, do it doesn't impact anything. anything. No, it doesn't impact it. I mean, the old, uh, what was the other one? Um, the Pro Canix Black Ace. It had yes. some of those nipples too when they came out. Didn't affect yes. it at all. I I can understand like if it's brand new, like yeah, it shouldn't look like that, but it doesn't yep. really affect uh, play. And of course, if it's new, it shouldn't look like that. But I don't, I don't know. I to me, it doesn't for me really personally, matter. yeah. I I've seen paddles with it. I don't care. I'm not thinking about it while I play. However, I will say if you're going to spend two hundred seventy five dollars, thing better come spotless. This is true. Yeah. If you spent and you were like, okay, this is going to be my only paddle, then yeah, I I yep. could definitely see that. We you and I we're we're spoiled because we yeah. we have a lot of paddles. So yes, yes, for sure. But yeah, my friend he uh he got his new gearbox uh and. The I so this was good for two th- reasons. One, people have been talking about some of them having a lack of power. So I was like, when my friend gets his, I will confirm and hit his. I got it, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But that same night I was testing it, he came back to me and he's like, dude, my handle keeps making this like crunching noise, like it's like cracking, and like when you would squeeze, you could kind of feel it cracking. And he t- he unwrapped it, and basically, it's gonna be hard to explain, but basically, there's like a case. Yeah. So the paddle is one mold and there's a case that goes over the handle to create the octagon shape. Yeah. And that casing separated slash cracked a bit on his. So like if you would just squeeze, like you would just kind of feel this I crunching see. and it I was, see. it's but just all you annoying. Need is, yeah. It's annoying. You, you just need a new case though. It's like getting a new case for yeah. your phone and you just slap it on and it snaps in and then you just put the over grip or replacement grip on top and you're good to go. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. So I, I believe Gearbox is sending him a new one, but that happened within 48 hours of him owning the paddle. So like, to me, all these people are getting paddles with weights that are off, like 7.5 ounces to 7.7, which like Gearbox went from our weights are basically always dead on, which is what I have always seen and what everyone's always claimed, to this launch where it's like now they're like, well, a plus 0.3 ounce plus or minus 0.3 ounce variance is like expected. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. That's mostly what the pickleball industry is. But you guys have always said, yes, we're basically dead on with the weight. And I don't expect that hundred percent of the time. I understand in manufacturing, you're going to have stuff's going to slip through. Yeah. But there's way too many on the internet now that have been like, yeah, I got a 7.5 ounce gearbox. I'm telling you it's because gearbox has not sold (laughs) <laughs> this this much volume before they're not used to it That's this why. launch they might have sold more paddles than they've sold in the entire company's existence i'm being completely <laughs> sarcastic there i'm just going to clarify that but that's what it feels like it's 100 percent what it feels like <laughs> yeah 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 definitely, definitely. so okay. yeah oh and uh people's shipments are still slow like if they ordered direct from gearbox like i'm sure again i'm sure it was massive volume but like people are annoyed about the slow shipment um People need their paddles, yeah. man. These fiends are out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll go back to my friend's thing because I forgot mm-hmm. to follow up on that. Yeah, so yeah. I hit his mm-hmm. and it still has plenty of power. Like you can tell mine and his are the same thing, but mine did hit a little bit harder. Okay. And now we've talked about, I think we mentioned it on the last podcast. If we didn't, Some Raphael time. himself has said, I asked him, do these paddles have any break in period where they change a little bit? And he said, yes. They will change a little bit. It will hit a little bit harder. And I heard another guy saying that. So I was like, okay, after hitting his and hitting mine, I completely believe that. We're not talking a light year difference, talking like maybe a five or 10% 10 power increase. Okay. But this makes a lot of sense because I started like recalling my entire experience with this paddle. Day one, I'm like, this thing hits hard. But I, I felt like I could control it very well. I was like, I'm... Like, no issue, essentially. Mm -hmm. Then it just kind of kept getting not harder and harder, but I was like, I'd go out like, you know, two weeks later and I'm like, hmm, like, am I just playing bad today? Or like, 
it's a little tougher. And then, you know, like after our tournament, I was like, it's a little tougher still. Now I'm like pretty used to it. But after hitting him side by side, I'm like, ah, I remember why I was like, yeah, this is actually a reasonably easy paddle to control. Not easy, but reasonable. So all that to say, yes, his was not a dud. It hit hard. I do believe there's a break in and I can see why most, if not all the reviewers would have missed this one, because I hit my paddle for over a month, basically a month before I reviewed it. And in that time, there would have been break in mm -hmm. adding lead tape in multiple different spots. Like you don't know what's the lead tape and what's the paddle changing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. You don't know what the experience is. And, you know, also if you're hitting with Franklin hitting with the Dura. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's you play bad one day, right? You could have just, you know, played amazing another day. The conditions could have been faster. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things that go into it, but it's still the, <laughs> the if not one of the most, if not the most powerful paddle on the market that you can like legally play with. Oh, I opinion. promise you once that thing breaks in, I, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, it's, everyone is still commenting on it. Like when we get into this tournament stuff, yeah, people, many of my opponents afterward were like, you are not kidding in your review. Like that thing hits really hard. Yep. So I was like, well, all right. Even my opponents at the tournament are noticing. So like, it's, it's a real thing. Wait, you all need right. to tell me that you just haven't gotten that cracked and that good? Definitely haven't, but I will give uh, <laughs> Connor Derrickson, that pickleball trainer, a shout out. I have to tell you about this text conversation I had with him. What? So he's the trainer for like Catherine Parento and like a handful of other pros, like, you know, physical yeah. trainer. And I'm working with him. I think I mentioned that in the past. Um, I've been going to the gym and it's very funny having someone harass you in a good way to get your butt in the gym. Yeah, I actually, I appreciate that he does that. Anyways, saw this working out. I texted him this morning and I was like, dude, I think it is far more impressive. We're going to come back to this because it'll oh. spoil some of the tournament. Okay. If okay. I say this, remind me to come back to that. We will come back to it. I'll remind you. Anyways, let's breeze through this really quick because that whole paddle thing took way longer than I thought. We have some <laughs> balls we want to talk about. Yes. They're the new Helios ball from Yola just drops yes. they just had some quiet drops the helios ball the new yeah. hyperion c2 um okay so have you hit with the helios ball yet i have indeed you have okay so to me uh when i when i pulled it out of the box i was like oh this is if the dura and the franklin x40 the dura fast and the franklin x40 had a baby because it looks like a dura it has the same color uh but it has the same hole pattern as the x40 and yeah um when i played with it i i was like oh this is pretty much a dura clone all the good and the bad of <laughs> of a dura so it it molds it it's it's it warps pretty fast um it plays pretty fast i did crack like one or two although it did i felt like it took a lot longer to crack but i mean that that could just be the conditions who knows um yeah but it did warp and then when it warps you know those bad bounces you get with the dura that sometimes yeah. like fly crazy high i felt like yep. i got that more with this ball than even a dura maybe i'm saying that because i was getting smoked <laughs> like me and my partner were like yo how we missed like four like serves like just like they just jumped up at us and i was like what is going on and they're like i oh, promise you love that ball that people's experience with a ball like their opinion of that ball is shaped strictly by how well or bad they play against it every single time. I promise you. Oh, outside that, of like reviewers who can set that bias aside, like the average person. Yeah. I have witnessed this a dozen times, and it's so obnoxious. Oh, really? What What are they saying? <laughs> well, because like I had I had some people who I was trying the Helios with, where I basically didn't say anything, but they they looked at it and they were like, "Oh, this isn't a like Dura. Like the holes are different or whatever." Person hits one bad shot and they're like, nope, I hate this ball. It's junk. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like you hit. It wasn't even the ball. Like I watched you hit the corner of your paddle. Like <laughs> just give the ball a chance. Like, but I've experienced this with so many balls, the diadem ball, uh, an Oso ball. Like if it's not a Dura, people are just like, it's a bad ball. I'm like, well, guess what? The Dura is a bad ball too. The Dura is a bad ball. Like that ball sucks. Like it's good at one thing. But it's bad at everything else. It's good at what's the one thing that is good at being fast? It's fast. 
it sucks. That thing sucks. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like, if the pros weren't playing with it, you know, if I don't know if there's some contractual agreement between that that ball or Onyx and the the tournaments or the pros, but that ball sucks. Like, it is horrible. Like, I talked to Kale. Kale. Kale is my my hitting partner. He plays pro. He hates the dirt. He's like, dude, when I pick that thing up and I see that it's warped, I'm like. No, he's like, no, it's like, no wonder no one takes this sport seriously. I can't even take it seriously. I'm playing with a ball that is not a perfect sphere. That is not a ball that, that defeats the whole purpose of what a ball is and is supposed to be. He talks about it every single time. And he's like, I can't wait for this thing to go away. And, you know, I think a lot of people share that sentiment and companies are now trying like YOLO with this new Helios ball. Right. And yep um gearbox with the gb1 cell quirk yep. with the pro s1 i don't know if you want to go into some of those other balls right now or if you yeah, had well, some final thoughts on the helios yeah i'll i'll put some wrap-up thoughts so i haven't uh you know gone through a ton of them just because people are picky about the ball i was in a league people didn't want to use a different ball whatever but i have hit it i hit it with my brother we both thought it played fast i both liked how it played but I don't think we've played it enough yet to make it go out of round or if mine is out of round, I just haven't noticed it yet because I've I've kind of been grabbing new ones and some old ones like it, it wasn't the same ball the whole time. So I need more time, but I've thought it was a fine ball so far. I didn't have any issues with it. My biggest thought at the moment is I would not be. This is what I told my brother. Yeah, I will not be surprised if this is a Dura where instead of having different sized holes, they just made them all the same size and said, Here's the there ball. There it is. Like, yeah, easy. We Ship fixed it. it. <laughs> Ship it. Yep. <laughs> Ship it. And then, you know, there was all this funny, like, advertising that was like, we used the Fibonacci formula to, like, perfectly space <laughs> all the. And I'm like, oh, God. She's like, it, we're using everything to market anything these days. Whatever. Anyways, I think it's a fine ball, but it's the same price as a Dura. So it's like, okay, what are you going to use? The Helios? Or a Dura if you play tournaments. You're going to use the Dura because it's the same cost as the Helios. So why am I going to go buy the Helios? Like there's nothing about it that makes me think I should buy this over a Dura. Nothing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, you're right. Unless availability for the Helios is better. Like if you, for some reason, you can't get your hand on the Dura. I think it's a, it's a fine replacement. You know, it's, it's a fine ball. It's just like nothing better or worse right well speaking of better or worse what do you think about the other two balls let's just go with the the gb1 first have you played with that ball only a little bit like i hit a couple shots with it at a tournament like a month ago but after that i haven't gotten to touch it so i can't give any thoughts on it okay well i i think that ball is a good ball uh it's it keeps its shape really well and it is fast i think it's just as fast, if not a little bit faster than the Dura. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and I like the color too. The color is very bright, very easy to see. I think, I feel like it's the brightest of all, I guess, like the balls that I've It's been pretty playing. bright. Like, yeah. It's like neon, like, you know, like it almost, shoot, if I didn't know any better, I was like, man, is this thing radioactive? That's how neon it is. I was like, I thought yeah, it would glow seriously, in the Yeah, it's very neon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that one's a good one. Um, I only got a couple and I wish I had more. And then some of them I kind of like gave to my friends to try out to see what they think. And they all like it too. Um, and uh, well, I mean, since you can't speak on it, what about, well, we'll move on to the next ball, which is the Pro S1, which should be released sometime soon. Soon. I don't know about you, but I really like that ball. That ball is probably going to be, at least for me, the new standard. Yeah, I mean, I think it easily could. I've enjoyed playing with it. I have i can't remember if I said it on a pod. I just know I've talked to a lot of people about it. So if I've repeated this, forgive me, audience. But I've played with it in multiple sub-50 temps and still have not managed to crack the ball. I actually, I haven't even, I don't think I've found anyone who's cracked the ball yet. So that's really impressive. The fact that it's hard for me to think of someone who's cracked the ball is impressive because every other ball, you don't have any issues hearing about them cracking did you and give it to Omric? 
I've not given it to Amrik. You need to give I it should. to Amrik. If you give it to Amrik, then we'll really know how durable it really is. Uh, and for those of yeah. you guys that don't know, Amrik plays pro. He's from Minnesota. This guy cracks Franklin's like after like five minutes of play. So dude's um, got a nasty forehand, I and he plays it. with a black ace. Yeah, so I want to see. So that that'll be the real test. Yes, but yeah, it's, the ball is held up really well. I'm actually. I'm not bummed. I'm happy that I'm going to LA this week, but it just got cold in Minnesota. Like we are now today. It was uh, below 30 all day long. And I wish I could have gone and played some pickleball because if the ball could survive even five games in those temps, I'd be impressed if it survived. Like, and if it just didn't crack, I'd be even more impressed. Give it to Isaac or your brothers. See what I'll be like, here's a project for you this week. Have fun in the cold. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He's have fun in the cold. Report back to me. You know, that would be such a bad boss thing of me to do. <laughs> It'd be terrible. <laughs> but no, I, I really do think I've heard like lots of positive things about the ball. Like I like every ball. Someone's going to find something to complain about. My thing has been in the heat. I don't know that it's a whole lot better than a Franklin. Like it does. It's fast initially, but it does soften up in the cold temp. I felt like it played very fast like a Dura, and then it didn't crack. So in cold, I was like, this is definitively better. In warmer, I think people who really like the Dura, it's not going to replace it for them. But I think for rec players, that ball is just going to be awesome. Like, I would pick that over a Franklin for sure. Um, Well, it gets pretty hot here in Oklahoma. But also, I give it to Jeff, and he lives in Austin. It gets quite hot over there, and he loves that ball. He says, dude, this thing is surviving. It still plays fast. It's not deforming or or uh you know the mold is still holding shape really well because you know e- even with duras it's even in warm weather the, the problem with the duras in warm weather is that it starts to deform right it gets soft it some, yeah it warps yep. yeah it warps yep. so uh you know after it, it like some spots get like more mushy faster you know the more you play and then those are the spots it looks like it's it has flat spots and that's what causes the ball to either jump really high at you or skip really low and sometimes you'll just completely whiff like a return and it's yep. quite embarrassing and infuriating yes right. extremely so i won't be surprised if the pro s1 takes over the ball market so, like if anyone's gonna do it selkirk has the marketing dollar to do it they've got enough people who know them and i think they've just genuinely made a good product with this one unlike their last ball so I think there's a lot of potential for that ball. Not going to be perfect. There's not going to be a perfect ball that everyone agrees on. But yeah, I think gonna... rec players can agree on it over a Franklin. Yeah. Are you going to start reviewing these balls, Chris? I want to, but like, it's I got to just get over it. But it's the like perfectionist in me that wants to like provide really good information. But the ball is just so difficult because it's so dependent on. The climate you're in, which I can't change, it's now officially cold here. So if I want to talk about a ball getting mushy, I can't. Like, I won't even know. You know what I mean? Because it's cold. Just go to one of your indoor facilities and tell them to turn up the heat for, like, you know, two hours. (laughs) Turn it to 120 in here, please. Yeah, easy. No no biggie. You've got got courts to spare over there. You know what I'll tell them? You can put this heating bill on Will's tab. (laughs) <laughs> will said we got to do it for science so put okay. it on his tab yeah put it on my tab put it on my tab and then um you know just give me your banking information i'll reroute it no problem no problem perfect perfect yeah. so yeah i mean i want to but i i probably just need to get over it i know that i don't think most people expect uh every ounce of information to be perfect or every single scenario to be perfect but in my head i'm like if i can't at least kind of do that i feel like I can't paint the full picture. And when I can't paint the full picture, it bothers me internally. It's my own personal problem. And I need to just get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Get over it, Chris. This is your job. I know. I know. (laughs) But I like giving good information and not bad information. (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, all right. That was probably the longest intro gear talk we've ever had. But I got something way more exciting we got to talk about, baby. What is that? Your boy got gold in four or five men's this weekend. Whoa, that bracket must have been very small. It just 28 teams, did, baby. Did, 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 28, 28 teams. teams. Okay, that's pretty impressive. The fact that it's also in Minnesota, also pretty impressive. I've seen the players over there in Minnesota. You you got some ballers over there. 
no it was it was really fun this is our second largest tournament in minnesota outside oh. of the ppa and it's actually oh so this is like a it's not that event. far off really how many oh wait, yeah how, how, you had a huge bracket then you had said 20 teams or 28 teams 28 28 that's ginormous how, how many people yeah. was uh registered for this event in in all the brackets and all the 400 divisions? plus four okay that's pretty sizable for a wow. local tournament that's huge like a non-ppa that's pretty big that's pretty big yeah i think our local tournament that we've only ha- held the past two years it was uh there is pretty large too it was like maybe 290 close to 300 the first year and then the second year we had 320 340 so not bad either but yeah 400 that's 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 a that's a good turnout that's a good turnout so yeah. who'd you play with I ended up playing with Patrick, um, who, you know, that's if I'm not playing with you, I'm playing with Patrick. Like, that's just my default. I just go between you two. OK, uh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I also do want to say shout out to Taylor and Chelsea who run the tournament because they do a great job. Honestly, one of my like I highly look forward to this tournament anytime it's coming up. And I feel like that's really good for, a, you know, there's a lot of there's a well, there's a lot of bad and good ppa tournaments for the amateurs but i think they do a good job at like giving you pretty much everything that the amateur wants at a tournament which is usually you want to play a lot of games so they Uh always do a pool play into a single elimination bracket so like you get plenty of games and then it gets you know you get seeded and then it's it's always competitive but it's now you have to really care because you're going to go out if you don't make it out of the bracket and then you know whatever um and then you know there's food truck they have like vendors there like i don't know was it held bathrooms are good uh lucky shots one of our facilities yeah i mean lucky shots is a great facility yeah yep so they do they do a great job on if you guys are ever uh looking to come to a tournament in minnesota it would be that one i would pick honestly i'd pick that over our ppa that we have here all right i'm coming next year you find a partner now maybe should i partner with no you can you stay with 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 pat you got to defend your title Unless you're going to yeah, play Fido next. Well, well, we talked about this. I was like, here's, dude, here's my thought. Yeah. You tell me what you think. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I don't know what to do because I, I feel like I'm, it feels very wrong for me to say like, oh, I'm a 5 That does not feel correct. But I feel like I'm in that weird middle ground where I am above 4-5 and obviously I just got gold in like a, yeah. 28 teams is not a small division. That was bigger than our Kansas bracket. You're right. It was. Yeah. So yeah. like it's not a small bracket, but I'm also like, I don't feel like a five O like that feels wrong to say. No, nah, you, you know just, what I mean? Yeah, of course it feels wrong to say, because we all know your true rating. I'm not even <laughs> going to say it. Like everybody <laughs> is listening to this right now. They're yelling in their, their cars or at home or wherever <laughs> in their office right now. They're like, of course you're not. Of all course right? you're not. Of course you're They're not. like, there's only one five in your rating, and it comes <laughs> second. It's not first. <laughs> after the decimal point. <laughs> after you know, the decimal point. After the decimal point. Okay, not before. After. Just <laughs> clear that so up funny. right now. So um, well, I mean, you, I mean you, you've played 5-0 before, right? Yeah, yeah, once way before I was ready. I was probably like a 4-0 when we did that. <laughs> yeah, had yeah. to carry my butt real hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, so, Poor you know, guy. you... <laughs> You've had some experiences. This ain't your first rodeo, Chris. Like you can do, it. and we've played the we've played harder matches than five zero. True, we played against pros. We played against Omric and Onik in doubles, and we got slapped. <laughs> yes, we did get slapped, but it wasn't like terrible. I think we got pickled one of the games. It can't get any worse. <laughs> it's okay, maybe it was just different for you. It didn't feel that bad to me. <laughs> But maybe I was, just, I was just having too much fun. That's but, fair. That's fair. Okay. 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 I'll have to right. go back and anyway, rewatch yeah. the video. I we probably are gonna like the next uh, CT tournament that comes up. I'm sure we'll play five zero. I don't really see a reason to play four five, um, but it does feel foreign and wrong to say that. Like I don't know. It's okay. Just what are right, what's keeping you? What is the one thing that is keeping you from feeling that you like you should be in five zero? I don't know. I like, I mean, it, there's a number of skills I could probably list, like my counters uh, being a big one of them, which I'm going to start drilling. Like that is a skill I really want to get better at. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like it's a lot of small things. It's not big things, but I just feel like if I cleaned up some of my drops, some of my counters and 
probably a little bit of my footwork. Like those are some of the core things that I'm like, if I did these really well, I would probably feel very confident in saying that. But mm -hmm. also I just think after our Texas tournament, I was just so rattled in my like pickleball identity that I was like, oh gosh, I am a three, five. I was like, I'm horrible at this no, game. No, like, no, 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 you know no. what I mean? <laughs> we, we, both you and I had bad days. Like that's uh, uh, in the last time in Texas and it's fine. Everybody has bad days and it is what it is. All right. That's, so don't, that's fair. Don't feel bad. It's behind us now. Okay. Yes. Until, until those clips show up somehow in some sort of edited video <laughs> or something, it's, it's, it's in the past. It's behind us. It's behind yeah, us. that's right. It's completely behind us. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, I just want to walk through some of the tournament really quick. So yeah. like I mentioned, uh, there's pool play um, and we ended up going four and two in our pool play. Uh, I don't remember the second match that we lost, but the first one that we lost was to our friends, Danny and Mike, who we don't see them all the time, but we play with them regularly enough. We know their game. They're actually both lefties. Mm -hmm. It's really weird to play against two lefties with Whoa. two righties. I've never um, done that before. Yeah, it's weird. Like everything is flipped in your head. Like you think you're speeding up to one spot and you're like, oh wait, that's his forehand. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. It's just a little trippy. Okay. And okay. dude, he countered one ball so hard. I actually thought I hit a decent shot. He countered it so hard right into like my uh like elbow pit area. And everyone all day was like, dude, like what's wrong with your arm? Like he left like a big bruise <laughs> on my arm. So he got me, he got me good. But they beat us uh 14 12 that was a really Ooh, nail tight match okay yeah, okay that was that was rough so anyways Wait, what round was this it was pool play oh this so is four, pool play yeah we okay. went four and two in the pool and then uh after pool play we had our first bracket match we won that like 15 three i think and then we had to play danny and mike again and i told patrick i was like we're not losing this time I'm going to clean some stuff up, like AKA not speeding up to his forehand, mm -hmm. one specifically one of their forehands. And uh, we just came in with a better plan. So thankfully, we beat them the second time, which is where it mattered. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, in the but actual they, bracket. Yeah, in the actual bracket where it really mattered. And they played well. We actually started up 7 0, and I was like, oh man, we got this. 7 0. Then they what? came how, back. How, how, how did you get that? Was it your serve? My serve was pretty on point again. I was just like, I'm going to rip balls because that's what you do with the gearbox. <laughs> <laughs> but so we start up 7-0, but then they come back 8-7. Like they just Ooh. went eight straight points. Ooh. It was bad. I They got a couple of like really nice shots in a row. I tilted a little bit. Patrick was like, dude, let's just call a timeout. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's like 5-7-2. Just keep playing. We're about to get the ball back. They got to eight first. Um, but then after that, we just... We won like fifteen nine, so it I was see. fine. Wow. Okay. Real quick, fifteen nine. Wait, you? Yeah. So in in the uh, since they weren't not doing two out of three for every bracket game because we just don't have the time yeah. at the facility. Uh, the bracket is to fifteen, and the pool play games are to eleven. I see. Okay. And but then the was... medal matches are two out of three. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Just to keep things running smoothly. Um, I'm curious. Uh. And I'm wondering about you guys out there listening to the pod right now. Should like how often do you guys play the score? Like I feel like you and I, we don't really play the score. Like do you do you get what I'm what saying? What do you mean by that? Like okay, so if you know if, if we're up, maybe we should play a little bit more loose. Maybe take a little bit more mm. risks, right? Mm. Or or if, or if we're close to the finish line, right? How do we play? How should we play? You know what I mean? And, and and if we're losing, we we haven't scored anything. There's been a lot of side outs. We should do something different, obviously. I think we do that sometimes, but sometimes we just get lost in kind yeah. of, you know, the rhythm of things and we forget to do that. You know, sometimes you forget to take a timeout or, yep. um, you know, you don't stack because you just need to give them a different look. And yep. I think we should do that more. And I don't know how often you guys out there, you know, listening, do that when you're playing or when you're competing, you know? I think Patrick and I did act a pretty good job of that this weekend because there were a couple matches where we were just stuck, like who knows how many side outs in one area. And so we would stack and there was probably one game where we should have stacked sooner, but mm -hmm. it was tight. And then it was like, I just feel it doesn't feel right to mix it up right now. But I do think, for example, actually, when we were down 
for well, I should have listened to Patrick. We should have took a timeout when they rattled off five straight points and then got another three. I should have just took the timeout, but I was stubborn. And then when that was happening, we also probably should have just stacked just to give them a different look. Like when they're getting five in a row that fast, you got to change something before it gets out of control. Mm -hmm. Right. We should talk about this more. Like if the score goes to this or that, or we haven't scored, we need to change something up. And yep. we got to decide too. like, you know, if you're up like game point and you're up by five, should yep. we take some risk or should we try and play it safe? Like, you know, here's what I game? found. What do you think? Cause I did have a small opinion on this this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were up either by a lot or like there were a couple games where we were up like, you know, 14, five. Okay. And at that point, I, I do feel you can kind of just, I don't want to say you can do whatever, but my thought is just don't do anything completely ridiculous. That's going to throw that point away. Like a couple times, Patrick would go for like a really big drive that just kind of felt unnecessary. Now, granted, he was winning a lot of previous points with that. But my thought is if you if it's 14 five, they're already kind of defeated. They're probably already nervous. I don't think you have to do anything insane. Just do something, like get the ball in play, make it a decent shot. But you don't have to hit them with a hundred and ten percent drive. Just hit them with like a 70 percent drive and see what they do. They're nervous, too. Right. Like they, they don't want to lose when it's 14 five one. Yeah. Okay. But you also do have points to work with. So I don't know. I think you could go either. But my thought is play it slightly safer. Sil okay. Slightly safer. We'll talk more about this when, because I mean, we have Texas coming up. So we should strategize this more and play the score a little bit more because I think if we did that, it would lead to like more success for us. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So uh, after them, which they were definitely some of the hardest opponents uh, we faced uh, in the tournament, uh, we played a handful of other people we knew after that. We ended up getting to the gold medal match. Uh -huh. Let's see, how many? I think we had to play four or five games in the bracket. I think it was three to get to gold, and then the fourth was the gold medal match. So here's the thing. Yeah. I have never lost to my little brother at this specific <laughs> tournament, not once. And uh -huh. do you know who I was facing in the gold medal match? Your brother. My little brother. Uh, Isaac. Who will be editing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <Are you? laughs> He's listening to it right now. Are you about to rub it in his face? I already know. I I see him right now. He's shaking his head. He's got his AirPods in, and he's shaking his head at his desk. I I can <laughs> I should tell him to record, right record himself while he's editing this just to see if I'm right. But uh, editor Isaac here, and uh, you're completely freaking right. I'm shaking my head, and I have my AirPods in. You suck. <laughs> That's just no, but but seriously, you'd be a really bad boss. That's torment. That's you know. <laughs> are there like employee like? laws against this like is this like too mean that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's okay he's technically a 1099 contractor for now okay uh, but uh. but anyways anyways uh so we ended up playing him in the final which we were kind of all hoping would happen like we were on opposite ends of the bracket so i was like okay let's just see each other in the final that would be kind of fun to have like an olsen showdown because it it's me and yeah and it was and it was me and my middle brother patrick and then isaac and our friend ryan so we end up playing in the final and uh, we we ended up winning in two, and the it was tough. Uh, I think both games was eleven five, eleven five. Ooh. And Dang, his Isaac partner got was what happened. Well, Isaac didn't exactly get to play the game. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> this was this was just don't let Isaac touch the ball for a couple reasons. One, his partner was cramping, which we actually didn't really know. Like our plan, go anyways, was gonna be to hit to his partner and his partner's not even that much weaker. Like we, we play rec games together all the time. And like, we go even like, it's never a blowout either way. Like it's usually close games, but Isaac is the type of player where you cannot let him get hot. If he gets hot, yeah. he's going to steamroll. Yeah. 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 So you're right. You just can't let him get momentum. And we knew it like it was safer option to hit to his partner. And then, since his partner was cramping, that did benefit us, even though we didn't necessarily know it in the moment. Um, so, yeah, that was just kind of our plan dink until there was an easy, easier ball to put away. But it was still like good games. Like uh, in the second one, they rattled off like quite a bit, got some energy back. Patrick and I were stuck for a bit. 
Um, like, it was still a fun final, but I will say, this is the least stressed I've ever been in a tournament final, and it because it literally felt like I was playing a rec game like oh. any other day of the week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it must be nice. I was so stressed in some of these other matches, and I walked into this one where, like, oh, we got I'm this not going to lie bag. to you. <laughs> well, no, not well, I did joke that we did, but honestly, I did. I really didn't know. Like, it seriously could have gone either way. Mm-hmm. But I feel like my brain was, like, zoning out the same way it does when we're playing Rec, where I'm like, huh, like, what's the next paddle I need to review? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just so... It was comfortable, I guess, is what it was, because I knew everyone. Mm, okay, well, that's a good that's a good feeling. We just need to get you to that comfort levels when we go play out of state or at these other tournaments, you know, like in yeah. Texas and Nationals in like a week or so. I I completely agree with you. The one advantage that Patrick has over you is I'm like, since he's my brother, I'm so comfortable, and it's not that I'm not worried about letting him down. Like, I obviously want to play well. But in my mind, letting you down is on a much higher <laughs> thing. So when I'm playing bad, it cascades more than when I play bad with Patrick. Like, I'm oh. like, whatever, Patrick will get over this or we'll be fine. But I'm like, oh, gosh, like, Will's never going to want to talk to me again. <laughs> I need to find a new co-host for the pod. Uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, especially after Texas, I was just like, oh, I'm so bad. <laughs> and. I will say, dude, I like I'm obviously I'm happy I got gold. This is actually my first men's gold ever. I've never gotten gold mm. because we always went up a division, not too early, but it was like we were at the level where we could win that division, but it also felt like we were sandbagging. So we just went up even though we hadn't gotten gold. Mm. So it's nice to kindly or to finally say I got a gold in men's. That's, you know what I mean? That's pretty good. I actually... I mean, you got one up on me. I don't think I've never, ever gotten a gold in men's doubles now that I think about it. Until Texas, baby. Nationals. (laughs) It's going to be your first gold, baby. Let's go. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I I will say, I did really, I felt like I really needed this win, or not even a win, but just like I needed to do well at this tournament, just because after Texas... I seriously, I've just been so down on my not a hundred percent because of Texas, but like I've been playing bad since Texas. Like last week in league, I won one out of my eight games. Like I just played like an absolute. I was just terrible, mm-hmm. and I was switching paddles, and like I couldn't find what felt good. And this week, I felt like the best I've played with the gearbox. I had no complaints, no issues. Like I felt. I felt like I was comfortable. You know what I mean? I wasn't thinking about the paddle. Okay. Well, that's good. You're feeling confident. Um, Yeah. I wish I could say I had something recently that has given me a huge confidence boost. But now that I think about it, I haven't had that. So you might (laughs) might have to carry the mental mental game for us in Texas. Because came back from Texas, uh, I don't think I played any tournaments after that i drilled a bit which is nice and then now i think about it the last video i posted was me against julian and that just reminds because i got pickled in that game so when i watched (laughs) it i'm like dang i suck uh and then the tournaments like the big tournaments before i mean i guess kansas city was the last one and that one was good yeah that one was good but still yeah there's it's just they're not can you text me kale's number yeah i'm gonna Why? i'm gonna pay him to throw some singles games against you so you get that confidence up oh okay yeah thanks. <laughs> that's not because kale and i have played a few singles rounds. like we end our our drill sessions with like a game of singles and last time we played singles i got smoked like you got smoked it. or he got smoked i got smoked it's just like great <laughs> This kale guy's not doing his job. What am I giving him a thousand dollars for? You, you not even letting you win. <laughs> you, you haven't paid him anything. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. No, no. I know you have it. And the reason I know is because he's like, dang. Or if you are paying him, it's not enough. He's like, dang. These these tournaments to play pro, these registration fees are <laughs> too much. So if you're paying him a thousand, that at least covers registration fee. But it's not. So clearly, you're not paying him enough. That's hilarious. That's yeah. very funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I will say after this tournament, so I'm going to be in California, uh, which, you know, I think I've mentioned in the pod, <laughs> like I'm going to be day. there for a week. 
Yeah. 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 In like a day. Um, <laughs> and then and you fly I, back to Minnesota for a day and then you come down to Texas. To go You're to nuts. Texas. You're nuts. I, it's such a waste of time. I should have just went from California to Texas. There was no reason to come home for one day. I just, that was such a dumb move. I yeah. just wasn't thinking. But uh, a lot of people have asked me, they're like, hey, do you want to drill when we're out there? And there's actually someone who I played with uh, like quite a while ago. Uh, one of the first people I met in California for pickleball. And he's like, dude, if you want to drill, like just hit me up and like, let's drill. And I was like, oh, shoot. It's like, I love to drill. Cause this guy, he was really good last time I saw him. And I'm sure he's five Oh plus now. Uh, so I actually might not do many paddle reviews from like now until after nationals. And I might just focus on like drilling. You okay. know what I mean? Like I just like with nationals coming up, I'm like, I just kind of want to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So who are you, are you going to be playing with anybody else? I mean, you probably know quite so a, many, <laughs> so many people. You can hit them. People Justin, from the discord Nam, are probably oh yeah, going to be discord. out there. Justin, Nam, like Jeremy, the guy who kind of sparked the whole three, five, uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Um, Nick, uh, who you don't really know, but like there's a lot of people I'm going to meet up with out there. Like it's probably going to be play pickleball in the morning, work, play pickleball in the evening. And just do that a bunch. Okay. Sick. I well, will say people are ready. way too kind to what me, though. What? Well, I got some messages. They were like, hey, there's this league here. And I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly the range. They either said it's 4-5. It's a 4-5 plus league. And there's pros that play in it, like Mary Brasha and yada, yada. It might even be similar to like what we do in Minnesota, where like Amrik and Anik are on the top court. But like, you're not going to get there unless you're good. And they were like, oh, you should like totally come by. And as soon as I like heard pros were involved, I was like, no, no, no. Like, thank you for thinking of me and like even offering. But I was like, I do not want to bring down the level of play. And I do not want to be that guy that everyone's like, See, why is nah, this guy here? The, no, no. You 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 need to go to these things because you're invited, right? You are you are oh. him. You are that guy. And here's the thing. You play in these things, right? And then just think about it. After you play pro, right, or, or play a pro level, you go back you go to some tournament, you play 5-0, and you're like, Psh, easy. <laughs> easy. Maybe. It's like, Maybe. It's I like just... you took off the weights. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you <laughs> just came out of, like, the hyperbolic time chamber, and you, know, you just leveled up. You, like, you're like, all right, this is piece of cake. You about to play pickleball with, you know, a wooden paddle. I'm about to destroy everybody in 5-0. That's what I want to see. My thought is just that, like, I have so much respect for people who, like, you know, they want their games to be good. And it's not that I think, because again, I'm sure I wouldn't even get to those courts. But like, as soon as I just heard there were even going to be pros there, I was like, I don't want to waste anyone's time. Like, I'm sure I could play with the people there, but I just don't want people to be like, why is this guy here? You know what I mean? Like, I got to get a little better, just uh, just a little bit better. And then like, if I was 5-0, I'd feel comfortable, but I'm not there yet. Yet is the keyword. <laughs> okay. Maybe after all this drilling and for before just national, practice, maybe that'll be there. Just practice the hands. That's it. That's right. You should just practice, practice nothing hands. but hands. Volley to volley, like in every yep. single, you know, like side, position, you know, distance, all of it. Yep. Every single type of ball. Do it with your left hand, do it with your feet. I don't know. Just get that confidence up. You'll be good. We're gonna yep. We're going to be killing it in Texas. Easy. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. But all right, let's go over this kitchen quick. I actually am going to change this, and we're only going to go over one thing. Okay. Because okay. this has been a pretty long episode, so I don't want to make it go too long. But I just want to talk about uh, a statement that Megan Fudge put out this weekend. And since I'm looking at a phone that's kind of far away from me, yeah, I just want to read the statement. Yes. Megan Fudge, she's a pro player, Megan Fudge DeHart. Uh, I have notified, she said in a tweet, is it a tweet or a post? Uh, anyway, Facebook it post. Matter. Okay. I have notified the APP tour that after today's winner's bracket final, I will no longer play singles until they implement a rule change about the number of overrules per match. I lost 11-9 in the third against her, and she had four overrules that were clearly seen by the referees. Four again, same as Atlanta tournament where I had already asked for a change. A player cannot continue to cheat and hope that refs miss it and have zero consequences. Enough is enough. Time to take action. I'm retiring from singles until I hear about a change. So, it's a statement. Yeah. I, and now... If you guys couldn't figure it out, she's talking about Salome. 
uh, <laughs> is who she played and mm-hmm. who the line calls were against. I th- I can't imagine that. Can't imagine. Yeah, right. Exactly. So um, from what I understand from this, because I didn't watch the match, uh, it's like, like there are some line calls and then she just keeps on overruling them. Like it's how many yeah. are there? There's four. Well, basically, she's calling like Salome is calling a ball out, and then she's getting overruled by a line judge or a ref. Okay, so okay. it's the classic like calling an out ball in, and then you're actually getting caught, and they're saying no, that ball was in. Okay, so that happened four times. Hey, that's a lot of times. What? That's a lot in one match. I mean, half the time the ref never even sees it. Yes. So that's kind of bad to have it four times in one match. Gotcha. So the refs were calling Salome's balls like they in? were overturning her calls. Oh, okay. like if Salome Salome. called it out, they're saying that ball's in. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it happened four times and there's no consequence for Salome. So she's going to keep on doing it because that is kind of ridiculous if the refs have to keep on calling it. So and then um, I guess if you're you're playing like. Sometimes not all the uh, no no all the pro matches even in the singles they all have they all have refs so I mean what if the yeah refs they have refs but they did have line judges for these as well okay but that's the thing sometimes in a pro match you you know when you are not you know at the winners finals sometimes you don't get all the judges you you might get one sometimes right you don't always yeah. get line judges or whatnot and of yeah. course if you only have one that one can't overrule all these bad line yeah. calls so. That is a problem. What do you think should be done? Like in your mind, what should the punishment be if you get overruled enough times? Like how do you prevent a player from just calling every ball out, right? Because half the time the ref doesn't see it. So if it's close, why not just call every ball out? Like if you don't care about your reputation, why not just call it all out? That's a good question. And, you know, you'd have to put some sort of like, I don't know, some sort of point penalty in place right at least at least for now we're talking about right now i mean obviously in a perfect world uh we'd have some sort of machines or something right sensors that can you know make the calls kind of for you and you'd have to put trust in the machines uh but as far as right now uh if you've been i think if you're over overruled um let's say at least twice i don't know do you think twice is enough Maybe it's three. What's like the limit for for something to happen? I think after after two overrules, but even at number two, I start to think there should be something like maybe maybe at overrule number two, you lose a timeout and at overrule number three, you lose a point. Okay, that's pretty good. But like like, it's tough because like to get to three feels really hard. And two feels kind of like it's too early to punish you. So it's like a weird. Yeah. Put it at two and a half, you know, easy. Two and a half, two and a half. If you think about it, (laughs) if you think about calling that ball out, we're taking a time. (laughs) So I could see that. That's probably, I think it would go like timeout point. And then like, do you lose a game if you do it again? Yes. What else can you do? I mean, yeah, I don't know what else you could do, but it feels really drastic. But I don't know if you get to four overrules. I think that's pretty bad. I think forfeiting the game. That that will. I mean, that will take. That will definitely. Let, let's be real. That'll definitely keep you from the bad calls. Like to yeah. lose a game, that is substantial, and I think that's necessary. Losing a game. Also, I don't think that most people have like most players don't have such bad eyes that you would genuinely get to four wrong calls you know what i mean like it's a lot of calls to mess up like if you got overruled four times it's like hard to be like yeah that was an accident yeah yeah four is a lot and okay here here's the thing let's think about this in rec play how many times do you think you you call questionable calls that could have like gone the other way that could be overruled well you know the guy you're asking. I am so unbelievably generous with line calls. People people look at me and go, are you blind? Like, why are you calling my ball in? That ball was way out. Like, you can imagine you got his- overruled for calling a ball in? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> Point loss. You didn't call that ball out. <laughs> 
That would be so bad. But like, dude, my friends make fun of me all the time. Like, we'll be playing games, and I'm like, in my head, I'll go, man, that ball. Like, I'm pretty sure that ball was out, but like, I don't want to be that guy. And then like, the next point will go by, and they're like, just so you know, by the way, that ball was way out, but we weren't gonna give it to you unless you called it. Oh really? Wow, dang! It's your friends really take advantage of you then. You know, I'm just easy to take advantage of, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, dude, am I, I mean, for me, it's so rare that that would happen. Like, I'm so nice about line calls that I don't see that happening. But I, yeah, I don't know. I think it happens in rec, but it just depends on who you're playing against. Like, do you feel like that you ever do it? In rec play? No, I'm, I'm usually pretty confident, like, with my out calls. And yeah, if I'm not sure, I'm like, okay, yeah, you can, you can have it. Like, it doesn't yeah. really, I, I just move on pretty quickly about it uh it hasn't happened to me in tournaments like that bad. like there's only one time that i can remember that i felt there was a bad call you know yeah. the other times i'm like okay i can see i can see that was you know like where you could see that was in or out um yep. but for the most part i think i've only been been called out or, or bad i've been all been what do they call it sharked or uh, bu- bu- bu. hooked uh hooked yeah hooked. yeah i've only been hooked once i've only been hooked once and this is in a tournament i hit a it was a i needed a serve i hit a beaming one down the line like the t probably hits the back of the t right and they just like called it out like whiffed it they called it out and my buddy donko i was playing with donko and donko was getting pissed and i was like let's just move on and then like the all right, the thing that annoys me the most after you make a call like that, don't talk about that call after the match because we we ended up losing that match, right? They came back, we lost that match, momentum shifted, but don't like come at me like apologizing about that call. Like, oh, you know, I think that you know it was close. It was probably could have been in, could have been out, and I was like, shut up. Oh, Just, like your opponent? Yeah, my opponent is saying that to me, and I'm like, shut up dude like this is the last thing i want to hear right now and here's the thing like (laughs) i think the thing that pisses me off the most is like yeah man it was probably out because it skidded and stuff i was like bro we were playing on taped courts yeah Yeah. if that ball (laughs) skidded that definitely hit the tape and that was in and at that point i'm rolling my eyes and i'm like whatever and i'm bouncing yeah but it is it it happens you know i've had two or three of those in a tournament where it did frustrate me pretty bad because i'm like it's always been in a moment that's like kind of important and it's just like there's no way you truly think this ball's out and i don't argue it like i'm not gonna be that guy not gonna say never i mean they 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 could they could truly think that it's out sometimes you want to win so bad like you know you perceive what you want you know what i mean so i i also get that as well you want to win so bad and this is like you want to see that ball out and sometimes like you you kind of trick your brain or your eyes into thinking that it was out if it was close you know it happens yeah and here's the thing i don't think most of the time it's like malicious intent it's always tough when like you're both fired up and it's a close game and like obviously both of you are going to like feel different emotions about it so i try not to fault people too hard but sometimes i am like man when it's tight it's hard to make a call like that that really hurts that really hurts but people are gonna do what they're gonna do i guess but yeah i do think and hope that the app will implement something uh about this the problem is and i saw them talk about this the app talk about this on facebook they were like we can't do anything because we follow usap's rules so they have to update the rule Mm. for us to do anything my thought is like the pro leagues, like you can just, implement something. Yeah, like just do it yourself. I don't know the PPA does it. <laughs> yeah, what is the PPA's uh, guideline in comparison to the APP? Well, I don't think they have really. I mean, they just have the the challenge system, the video replay. But there's no like after you're out of replays, like you're just out of luck. You're stuck with their call. Yeah, but also uh, there's not like not every single court or match that's played has yeah. replay or has video features, you know? Yeah, I think some a lot of the PPAs, it's usually quarters and on, or I think some of them have had quarters and on for replay, and APP definitely doesn't. Half the time, they're not even streaming their tournaments, so they're just out of luck. But 
I don't know. I hope I hope a rule gets changed. I mean, Megan Fudge has been killing it in singles at the APP, and yeah, I'm sure it's very frustrating killing to lose like that. In everything, honestly, she's been doing good in doubles as well. But yeah, it must yeah. be frustrating for her. But I'm kind of glad she's, you know, taking the stand. And this is this is how the game progresses, right? This is yeah. how the product progresses, gets better. So we'll see if anything, you know, comes of it. You know, we'll probably stay on top of it. You think? Do you think we'll have any news about this? Do you think? All right, do you, how likely do you think that USAP will make some sort of change? It's tough because I want to say that it's possible the rules have been published for what they might be in 2024. At least I thought I saw someone saying that. And if they are, I'm like, what, are they going to add something last minute? Feels kind of late-ish to do that. But also, I don't know. I want, like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, this is a big deal. You should change this. But it also really only ever happens with one person. So I'm like... Are you going to like add a rule last minute for like the one player who consistently makes these bad line calls? I think they should. I just don't know if they will. Mm. Well, APP should just, you should just do APP. If you're listening, just make the change or implement the change anyways, because uh, I don't know. It just seems like a loss for you to lose out on a talent like Megan Fudge in your singles division. So, I mean... I would if I was the APP, and especially if Megan Fudge was attending, uh, you know, a lot of my events, I'd probably do it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, that's all about uh, all we have for today's pod. That went a little bit longer than we had anticipated. It did. We we like to talk. <laughs> yes. Like to talk. But yeah, it was... Uh, it was a fun week, fun to walk away with the gold. I'm looking forward to nationals. I think just the experience of it is going to be fun. I really liked last year's. Obviously, playing together again will be good. Just pray for the love of everything that there's no wind like a last tournament. Please, 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 please. Now that I think about it, I think last tournament in Texas, because it was kind of cold and it was kind of windy. Yeah. Yep. Now that I think about it, that might have been partially due to that partial solar eclipse that was that was there. Uh, that was happening. Hang on. I <laughs> what did I say last time? People corrected us in the comments. There were we said, so we, many we, comments. We said we said did lunar, we say lunar? That's why we said That's lunar eclipse. Was. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, solar. I saw so many comments and I was like, I can't mess this up twice. They're gonna be like, guys, we corrected you once. Like yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. But yeah, it was. I, I'll have to check the weather. I will be curious to I, see. I just I want venues, decent conditions. I heard the venue is pretty nice. Um, they're almost done or they're they're getting to completion. I texted a buddy of mine who lives down there, and they're like, "Yeah, it's it's looking good." And I was I'm pretty stoked because if it's anything close to how the mockups show of how the venue is, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for listening and uh, we'll catch you next week. Peace.